Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I am your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I did a series of posts, I think two posts on Facebook about battling for your seed. And I told the story of my two children and the challenges I went through in raising these children and taking care of two paralyzed parents at home at a very young age bracket. Now, I was, I've been trying to review why we have stayed together, my wife and I, for 42 years and then we've been married for 38 years despite all these challenges. Number one, our number one, as in rice, you know, that's why I do my lectures. Arrow is re for realization, arrow one. I realize that marriage is a reasonable risk. I was AS, I did my genotype in Ibadan. It turned out to be AS, and my wife did, it was AS. But I was willing to take that risk because I told myself that other things could go wrong. And I told my wife that if we don't have children, she should not bother me because I was more interested in that relationship, the relationship. So marriage is a reasonable risk in going into a relationship with somebody. Arrow one, reasonable. Arrow two, risk. Arrow three, relationship. Relationship is how we connect. And then the reason I connected with her was to build a future. So when you realize that you are building, you are going to build a future together, you must look for responsibility. Responsibility is the ability to take charge to responsi responsibility. Your ability to respond to challenges and take charge. That's the word responsibility. So I found in her the ability, the capacity, the willingness to respond, to take charge. And I think she found that in me too, because she could see my struggles in going through medical school, my struggles to live a life that was different from my background. So responsibility. Responsibility to God, she didn't see that with me because I wasn't a believer then. But I saw that in her, she was a good Catholic. Responsibility to each other. Responsibility to society. Before you marry a man, check his responsibility to his parents. Before you ma marry a woman, check her responsibility to her parents. Check her responsibility to her academics. Check her responsibility to her job or career. If you don't see responsibility in these areas, don't marry that person. That's why when Eliezer went to look for the wife of his master, Isaac, she, Rebecca, he said, the woman I will tell to give me water to drink, I will say, I will give water to your camels too, will be the one. So that woman would respond to a stranger with her ability and provide water, realizing that the man has come from a long distance, and then go beyond the brief or the demand and give water to camels. To water 10 camels, she needed to fetch 1,200 liters of water. 1,200 liters times 10, acceleration due to gravity, times the distance will equate to the amount of work she did. 
If it was a well like the one in John chapter 4, the depth of that well in John chapter 4 was 138 feet deep when it was excavated in 1945. So imagine fetching 20, 60, 20 liter jerry cans of water from 138 feet times acceleration due to gravity times the, the 1,200 kilograms and then transporting them to where the camels were. That was the amount of work she did to earn her husband. And she met her husband in the farm. So um, Isaac had camels, had animals because Abraham had and Isaac now inherited. So the person you want to marry or is that person capable of managing your future, managing your vision? So we got married because uh, she wanted to be a teacher, but I wanted her to be a nurse because of my career as a medical doctor. Though she eventually has come back to running schools and loving children and doing her teaching career. So responsibility. I could see her responsibility in my hardship. I could see her commitment to the relationship in my challenges. So if you don't see responsibility, don't go in. Love does not sustain marriage. I, in fact, me as a person, I don't understand the word love. I only understand commitment and responsibility. So you must be responsible to each other. Then you must be, responsibility involves commitment. One of the things that uh, helped us was that we also realized, arrow number whatever, five, you must realize, we realized where we were coming from. She was, she has lived with people severally as a house girl to them. She came from a background that the parents were illiterate, she was living with people because she couldn't stay in the village. She had an ambition to become somebody. I was squatting with people. I didn't have my parents at home, but I had intelligence. And so we mutually realized that we must not replicate where we came from. We needed to produce a new future. And I was always mentioning that new future to her. And so it is like playing a football league. You will strain yourself to play because of the prize set ahead. That was how Leicester was able to win um, the championship of Premier League one time. Just small club in a small city. So it is that prize. He said, I keep pressing forward towards the mark of higher calling. He said, he bore the shame of the cross because of the glory set for him. So you... When I showed the, 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 video, the videos of my children, the pictures of my children holidaying in Germany, that was the future we were looking at and we were working towards. We were working towards the future of having children better than us. If you can't read my hold on to your vision. I said I, am a, I was a general practitioner then but I'm looking for it. I'm going to raise a medical doctor that will specialize in a particular area. If you have been following me from Aba, you will see that I don't talk any, I can be very funny, but I mentioned my vision and my dreams, and you can see them coming to pass. For those of you from Sunday school, when I was teaching people from the fellowships, full gospel businessmen fellowship, IPCI, young businessmen fellowship. If you have been consistently following me, you will have noticed that I live for the future. And so one reason most young girls today will not stay in marriages is that you start the relationship with too much enjoyment, too much romance. You will go and eat barbecue fish of 3,500. What if the 3,500 is no longer there? Can she manage the way we manage? You... You stay, you stay in a hotel of 15,000 Naira a night. What if you lose your job? Can she stay in a self-contained apartment? You know what we call self-contained in Nigeria. 
that goes for 25,000 Naira a month. So we didn't have much. So I, would put, I put my cards on the table and she put her cards on the table. So, but we had a future. We, were, we didn't have much in terms of luxury. So when hardship came, we were addicted to it. We were prepared for it. Sometimes people start relationships with too many promises, too many ideals based on enjoyment, not based on building a vision. Building a vision is stressful, is sacrificial. It will strain you. So it is this concept of building a future that was in our mind. Today I've not gone anywhere. I'm in my house because she was always telling me, let's sacrifice now. Let's live in such a way that if we don't want to go and preach, we'll stay at home. She's gone to work. I don't wait for honorarium. There was a place I preached. They didn't like the way I preached. I had already left. They ran to come and meet me in the hotel and told us to go back. I had left. I will not compromise my message because of money. As long as God speaks to me. I spoke something and they were angry. And I told them, I will not preach this Sunday. I'm going back home if you're angry. Because I warned you before I came that I'm not a normal preacher. And I told them, at my age, I cannot be afraid of people. I will not apologize to man when I hear from God. And God manifested his power greatly in that the people were receiving the anointing of God in different um, confinements outside the, the extra rooms for viewership. And prophecies came to confirm what I was saying. So, but it was a vision I cultivated with my wife when we were in the midst of hardship. You see, it's like two strips, bimetallic strips coming together. If you have a bimetallic strip of copper and iron, the, you have to weld them together. The heat of amalgamation builds a bond that you can bend in a certain direction and bend in, in the other person's direction because you have been welded by a vision. So the heat of what we passed through helped us to push forward. There was a day we were coming from Umuaya. The vehicle headlamp went off and we parked the vehicle in Kayama. We entered public transport. We got home around 1.30. There was no pain, there was no anger, there was no frustration. There was a future that we were looking towards. So create the future. Don't live in the present alone. You are not taking me out. You are not doing this. You are not doing that. No, 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 no. Concentrate on the future. My wife will sit in the, in the boot of the bus, open the tailgate, and she will be selling books there. My wife, had, I don't think I'm going to preach with her anywhere, where she went to pose in the altar. No, 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 no. There was one church we went to. The pastor's wife wanted to treat my wife like trash. By the time she introduced herself to that woman. She was there. The pastor's wife was just entering nursing school. And my wife had graduated from nursing school many years before her. When she knew what we were doing, she started calling her ma, ma, ma. So we were not into this posinkology packaging. No. There was a future we were preparing. Packaging will not help us in, uh, to prepare for that future. And so you are able to bear the stress. You are able to bear the strain. You're able to bear the pain. We are seeing the future of these children. And so that is the thing. Responsibility. Responsibility. The next arrow is respect. Respect. You see, um, I respect my wife. If you climb this staircase up with your shoes and the place is sandy, I know she will not like to step on sand when she comes. So I will sweep the sand away because I don't have any person in this house until very recently. I will sweep the sand away because I respect my wife's feelings. Respect is to care for somebody's ideas, somebody's feelings, somebody's body. So 
I, if I eat with her and she r rushes off to work, leaves the dishes there because she wants to be there on time, I will eat later and I will wash the dishes because I don't want her to come back. After all the work, I can't work like her. After all the work, she will come and wash dishes before going to prepare meals. No. So, respect. I respect myself so I don't do adultery. A 60-year-old pastor is currently in a correctional center in Abba for sleeping with the housemaid. Most times, we, we question these pastors for their lack of discipline. But their wives, most pastors' wives are irresponsible. They don't satisfy the sexual desires of their husbands. Particularly the very religious ones, they behave like Momo. They behave with high level of momority. So, and they deprive their husbands. And this husband will see this vulnerable house girl and go there. I am not excusing their stupidity and irresponsibility. I am tempted, but I respect myself. I respect those of you who listen to me. I respect my wife. I respect my children. I respect my workers. And I fear God. So respect. When you respect each other, you don't talk anyhow. Women can talk anyhow. But you as the man, if you respect yourself, don't talk anyhow. Don't talk to her anyhow. She reminded me of something I said recently. Lad, I said about 30 years back, 31 years back. She reminded me this morning. And she understands. When you respect, you are responsible. You forgive. Because crisis will cause disrespect. So, you respect the marriage. You can't come here and talk to my wife anyhow. I can't bring a woman to this house. I must not even take her anywhere. Respect. I respect myself. Imagine me that I have a lot of people who admire me. There's nothing about me. It's only the anointing and what is coming out. I can't strip myself naked for one woman. No, I respect myself. So respect. You respect yourself so you work hard so that you don't beg. You respect yourself. You work hard so that you don't drive your children from, for, from school because of school fees. You respect yourself in such a way so that they don't drive you from the house because of house rent. Many of the things people beg me for, I find them very irritating, extremely irritating. I buried my father and my mother at the age of 31, 32. I did not beg any money. I worked hard and God helped me. And I buried them according to what I had. And I built a house, a house that they lived in before they died. Because of respect, I am frugal because I cannot go and beg. Because I respect myself, I will make sure that I excel in what I do. So respect is what people don't lack. Most people don't respect themselves. They don't respect their faith. They don't respect their spouses. They don't have respect for their, their, their position. Respect. And when you have these arrows, responsibility, respect, um, Realize that you are into this for life. Realize that there is no person out there that you are admiring that might be better than what the person you are in at home. When you realize that others are going through their own challenges, somebody, somebody was coming to report to me that his wife does not wash his clothes. He came and met me hanging clothes. I was hanging the clothes I had washed. That was nearly 15 to 18 years back. Till today, I still hang clothes. Even though I have a washing machine, I hang clothes. My wife washes and irons. But if she is not in a position to do, when she had a fracture, I give her a bath, I will help her wash her clothes because one hand was fractured. 
she will struggle to do, but I will take them from her. So, you don't know what we are passing through in our marriage. Don't admire us. Build respect. Realize that you can work on your own to become better. That is what, these are the things that have kept us. Also realize that God will judge you because of your marriage. As a man, he says, treat your wife with caution so that your prayers be not hindered. So your prayers can be hindered. The Bible says a wise woman builds her house and a foolish one tears it down with her hands. So, madam, you can tear down your household. This contention for, for rivalry, feminism, has not helped any person. A macho man has not helped any person. My students are even listening to Andrew Tate. You will ask yourself, is Andrew Tate responsibly married Oh, Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels had divorced twice. He died with a woman in a hotel. Follow the principles of those who have had enduring marriages. Now, that prize of the future that two of you are working towards can become the reason for divorce later. You will wonder why Bill Gates would divorce Melinda. You will wonder why prominent Nigerian preachers who have displayed so much romance in public, their marriages will end when they reach a position of prominence. Sometimes the prize can become the problem. Sometimes the prize can become the problem. Why? If you see the prize bigger than the arrows, Arrow, respect, realization, responsibility, and all that. If you now concentrate on the prize, and pride comes in, because the prize will bring pride, and then you want to become selfish, individualistic, or you now equate your success with the material things, not the principle and the process, you will divorce. As I was growing with my wife, we were getting richer, getting more prominent, getting wealthy, getting materials. I realized one thing, that women find it difficult to manage influence. Because I am the wiser of the two. She's hardworking, she's frugal, she's committed, She's responsible. I found out that if I start contending with her for relevance and ownership, the marriage will end. At one point, because I must be frank with you, at one point, nearly every day we were in the school, there were three things that will happen that will cause that can cause divorce. I mean it. So, I decided that I will release everything we own together to her to manage. And I built another entity. Today, they asked me for money. I gave money out now before she went. Sometimes when she wants to demand, there was one day that was very funny. She just wrote, I was phoning. Oh, I was recording. She just wrote on, she wanted to go to work. She wrote on a brown paper. No money, no gas, no food. And she held it like this so that I could see. Then I hurriedly rounded up the recording or whatever. Because the fear of madame is the beginning of wisdom. So I went, I asked her, what is this? Is this a protest or a request? She said she wanted to put it on the clothes that I would wear so that I could read it before going. Is this a request or a protest? I stayed with you in this house, slept on the same bed with you. Is this a, you didn't tell me, is this a request or a protest? She said it's a request. I said, why is there no price tag? Oh, uh, I should give her a certain amount of money. 
you know, it was a Saturday. I don't do transfers. I'm nearly always broke. Because as money comes, I reinvest. I am nearly always broke. I, I always sign checks because I want to feel the pain of the money I'm spending because I worked it out with pain. But God helped me. I had sold Gary or potatoes and I gave her less than what she requested for. But it was okay. Say, God, she, when I give her money, I need to like it. She will say, God bless you real good. <laughs> My brother, romance and finance, eh, that thing. God bless you real good. Respect and finance. Eh, no matter what she's managing there, that my own night is sweet past. So, gave her. So, I, Jesus, the Bible says it, Jesus did not contend with God, being equal with God. He humbled himself and died the death of a common criminal. That he had a name, he was given a name above every other name, that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. So, Love your wife as Christ. Love the church. Be willing to give to them. I, I, I don't. I give. I give. I, I don't. I don't need much. This shirt is a gift. This cap, my old school cap, is a gift. The the glasses, gift from America. The President General of uh, Robo Progress Union, Olorogun, Doctor uh, Dema. Onomet Dema brought this and three others. The bottom I'm wearing, Cecilia Ibru gave to me. So, gift. I can't live a simple life based on charity. In fact, I'm like an orphan. I live on charity. So, but I give up things so that this marriage can work. Because if this, this marriage is like a tall building, if it collapses, several occupants will die. Their faith will die or be injured. So I am ready to give up, give up sexual appetite. I killed sexual appetite so that sex cannot cause quarrel between my wife and I, even at this age, because old gun still shoots. Food, and it's money. I want this relationship to be a model and to bring honor and glory to God. I hope that this has ministered to you. I don't recommend my lifestyle to every person, but this is what has worked for me for 42 years of relationship, 38 years of marriage. I am blessed. My wife is blessed, but I need this stable marriage need the stable union to continue being blessed. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. Subscribe to this channel. Uh, join my WhatsApp group, plus 234-705213-6763. And go to my online bookstore, petrapublications.com. P E T R O -E, Petra Publications.com, one word, and you can download books and messages and several other things. Please remember to pray for me, remember to subscribe and share. God bless you.